VC here. Hi guys and gals. Well, it is Monday and as you all know by now, Monday is a day where I often do tags. The sun's over there and it's kind of in my eyes, but it's probably the best way to, to film these. So we'll be doing two tags as usual. I'll be starting with uh, Jasmine's tag. Hi Jasmine. Hope you're well. And uh, today over in Switzerland, there's a lot of carnivals going on, but um, it's I just haven't been to any the uh, but uh, there's a big difference actually I was telling Mrs. DC that over in in the UK where you are frankly your carnivals I, I found are really really fun over here there's a lot of music there's a lot of uh, they call them googans and people are dressed up and they play funny music and uh, and uh, there, there's it's just very different it's very different. It is spectacular in its own way, but not as grandiose as yours. So just, just to say. Okay. Anyway, so there was five questions. Uh, so let me see. We're going to start with question number one. Uh, what is your ideal weekend? Wow. Well, my ideal weekend... Uh, I would have two. One, if I'm here. Uh, if I'm here, uh, it would be having the grandkids come over. Um, I will make a one pot, so a one pot meal, an instant pot meal. They come over. We have, we have a drink. We have a chat. We have some, a bit of finger food just to, especially it would be outside and the kids are playing around. And um, then we uh, either, if it's if it's this time of year, I'd say a one pot meal. If it's later on in summer, have a barbecue and just basically have a few drinks, maybe a glass of wine, a bottle of wine, and uh, um, you know some cake or something, some type of dessert. Maybe Mrs. DC will often make some type of pudding and. Um, just enjoy, just enjoy the family time. That would be my ideal weekend. And in the evening, um, I, I usually uh, go if I was going to say a sleepover with the grandkids. We tell stories. Yeah, that for me in these days is my ideal weekend. If I'm abroad, my ideal weekend would be probably in Cork, where I uh, take a play, something like that. Go to the theater have an early meal, uh, have a few drinks in a pub, and just walk uh, along the River Lee, and just enjoy, enjoy the time, yeah. That's question one. Question two, that kind of fits in, doesn't it? Do you enjoy being alone? Why or why not? I've had a lot of times where I've had for business travel, had to travel alone. And I really, really do enjoy it. Now, it's not that I don't enjoy traveling with others or traveling with my wife, but it's completely different. And uh, I think that anybody, and I've talked with some people, uh, if you had the means, and I've known a few people that have had the means to do that, they would take two vacations. One would be just alone, and one would be with their spouse or family. And, and I get that. Now, when I'm traveling alone, uh, and I especially I, I keep I keep bringing back Ireland, as other people bring back other places in the world. But I, I would uh, go, for example, geocaching, or I would go in pub hopping on my own and discover different pubs or different places. And I would hop on a bus and then walk on very narrow and dangerous places. Um, but I couldn't do that if I wasn't alone. I knew some will say, well, if you were alone, uh, no wonder it was dangerous. Uh, but there are certain things about being alone, but I'm not ever completely alone. I usually will have, uh, I always bring along my, my, my tablet or I have my phone. And I, if I'm in the pub, I like to read. I look at people. I talk, especially if you're in Ireland. The Irish love to talk. So I'm not actually alone, but I can be alone. And I choose to do what I want to do. As many people have said, you know, there's only one big problem when you're alone, depending on where where you are. 
it's going to the bathroom and not losing your place or being with a few people that you see are there and say you just want to keep keep my place as we've discussed probably on other logs for example if you're in a pub you'll have your pint glass and you take the um what is it called again the uh oh the cardboard thing that's under the glass i what is it called there's a real name for coaster the cake coaster and just put the coaster on top that shows this place is taken don't run away with my glass and you go over and then you come back anyway yeah i think i've answered yes i do like to go alone uh question three do you have a best friend well i guess the obvious answer could be and it could be you know I, yeah i have a best friend i've been with her for like 50 years uh and we'll leave it at that for that one but on the other hand do i have a best friend i do have one which i consider a best friend and uh, i have some very close friends uh which are not quite the same as best friends as you know but yeah now question four how did your parents meet well in the village where i was which is sutton quebec which is just off the vermont border um there at the pier where my my parents were were uh, young so let's put it that way in the four late 40s early 50s um in their case it would probably be early yeah for my parents it would have been like the early 50s my dad would have been just turned 20 you know so like i say late 40 early 50s every week uh there was like over the town hall there was a there was a a big room where there was dancing and uh, that went on for years and years and years i even went to uh, some dances there but that and since this was a bilingual uh part of the world uh french speaking and english speaking you'd have both both i was gonna say uh, language groups over there my dad was a french speaking person mom was an english speaking person and they met in one of those dances which were organized at the at the city hall and like that so yeah i can't say that i know all the complete details i can imagine my dad asked my mom to dance a few and probably they met over a few times at the same place and started dating i guess that was that's as much as i know from what they've told me yeah question four was that yeah it was question four then question five what did your grandparents do for work okay so my grandparents on my mom's side um my grandmother was a homemaker uh she was at home my grandfather in his early days um, um him and his dad if i'm not wrong they owned a sawmill in a place called high water and uh, one of the reasons it was called high water is that it they had floods and they lost their sawmill in a flood <clears throat> so they were close to wiped out i don't know how it worked out in the future if they got insurance money or what but <coughs> excuse me but then my grandfather moved to another town called sutton the one i've mentioned earlier and he bought two farms uh, at least as far as the grounds go so he must have got some money back and uh, he became a farmer and i always knew him as a farmer and um, for all the time that he was alive that i was around put it that way he, he was a farmer yeah and like i say my grandmother was a homemaker they were very involved in uh, in uh, the town uh, social life but that's not part of the job that's not part of the question now my grandparents on my dad's side so my grandmother uh she was at one point in her life one of those one room school teachers you know where you have from grade one to grade seven something like that way northern in the north of uh, quebec a park called lac saint jean it was still like uh, the wild west but it was the north but anyway you know what i mean of that part and, and um what's kind of amusing is that you didn't have to have like a high school education to be a teacher then you just had to be like 
one step ahead of the kids. Because as far as I know, my grandmother probably had like a grade seven. By the way, you did have grade seven in those days. I had a grade seven anyway, so on. Uh, but, uh, and then she became a homemaker. And when she was a widow at one point, she was a uh, cook in a convent uh, where there were nuns. Now, my granddad, um, he passed away in his uh, late 50s. But, but he was a mixture of different trades. He worked on the, on the railway um, as a builder on the railway. Uh, in those days, people would go off in the woods and worked in the, in the woods up north. Uh, and they had a farm. So while they were, while they were away at the, at the woods, uh, my grandmother was a farmer, so to say because she had the animals, the cows, and so on. And of course, she was helped by, by her children, which were my parents. Uh, sorry, my, my dad, her, his, his brother, and there, was a, there were two brothers and a sister. So they were, they were farmers. And uh, they basically did what they could to, uh, you know, to, to survive in those days. Yeah, so that was about it. So yeah, he was a bit of a mixture of a, a laborer, a farmer, and like I say, he was a... He worked on the railroad, but that was to build railroads, yeah. So I've answered all the questions. Thank you, Jasmine. That was a pretty interesting tag. So DC signing off. Take care, everybody, and have a good Monday. Bye-bye.